Thanks very much, Shane, for speaking with Blue Notes again. You're just back from overseas. You, you've been speaking to a lot of investors. Uh, you're in the US, you're in London. This is before the events that were in Paris. So in your trip, what was the feeling about the global economy, Asian economies? Were, are people flat optimistic? Actually, that's a good question. I would say on average, people were more concerned, not so much about the global economy, but very much about Asia. There were a lot of questions about China slowing down and what the ramifications were going to be for Southeast Asia and also obviously for Australia. So I think there was more caution and concern than perhaps we saw even a year ago. And that, that, that was very much the kind of underlying tone as we went right across uh, Europe and North America. And obviously we've, we've just had the, the full year profit. Um, you've dealt with Australia, talked to Australian investors quite a lot. Are the views, the questions from the, the offshore investment community significantly different to what you get here in Australia? At their heart, no. I mean, the investors are concerned and want to understand, you know, how we're thinking about the strategy, how we think about the world environment in which we, we live and what kind of changes we're going to make and whether they have ramifications for things like the dividend. I mean, those are essentially the things that people are questioning. They might come at those questions from different angles, but essentially they do get to the, to the same point. And indeed, this is a question that you're going to get a lot as you take over as, as chief executive. You know, are you still fully invested in that Asian strategy, you know, whether it's a super regional strategy or not? Absolutely. I mean, it's core, it's core to who we are and what we do. I mean, ANZ, it's an interesting, it's our 180th birthday this year, and so there's a obviously time for reflection. You think about the bank, the whole bank's history has been about really financing trade and financing trade with fast growing parts of the world. And at some point that was financing trade from the UK to Australia and New Zealand. And now it's kind of switched and it's about Australia, and New Zealand and all the way through Asia. So that essence about what we do, what we're good at, our core competency, where we have a competitive advantage is absolutely the same. There's no doubt about that. And there's no doubt about while there, might, there will inevitably be cycles, the longer term, even the medium term outlook for Asia is incredibly positive. It is going to be the growth engine of, of the world. So that's resol resolute. The question is more about, you know, how do you change tactically to manage for short term changes in the environment and potentially some longer term ones about the regulatory environment, competitive environment, level of interest rates, all those things. And clearly we do have to change. We need to kind of tweak and, and look at our resource allocation and, you know, question things that are working really well we want to do more of and things that aren't working uh, so well we need to really question the model there. I mean, as you say, investors are dispassionate. They want to see returns. It's a very nice story for 180th year you know, history that here is the bank and here is its history. They want to know about the next quarter, the next half, the next one or two years. How do you explain that strategy in terms of how you'll keep earnings going? And sure. I think, look, and I understand there's a, there's a lot of uh, people who write about the fact that the market has become very short term. And look, I understand that and I understand the desire to always look at the next quarter. I actually, my, my, my opinion of that is actually investors are remarkably patient and they are interested in the long term. And look, maybe, you know, there's lots of examples of companies in the world who have brilliant long term strategies who don't make any real profits today, but that the market loves. And, you know, the classic example is somebody like an Amazon. So it is possible to get that balance right. Um, so. Absolutely, they're invested in the, the long term. I actually don't find our shareholders, the big funds, too focused on the short term. And you made the point uh, just before we started shooting that uh, you know some of them quite cleverly asked, is this Mike's last result or your, your first result? What they're obviously wanting to know is how different are you going to be? Is that something that you, you've been able to say to investors at this sure. point? Sure, and, and, and the way that I think about that is, look, obviously we are different individuals, and so there'll be a different, there'll be an element of there's a different style. That's just because I'm an inherently different person to Mike, better, not necessarily better or worse, that's just different. But the real issue is about the change in focus for the organisation, and the change in focus for the organisation is not about Mike or Shane, it's about the reflection of the, our maturity as an organisation. We're a very different organisation today than we were in 2007 when Mike started. And so inevitably, the challenges that we have are very, very different. The world in which we operate is very, very different. Our starting point is very different. So we have to, we have to approach, it, uh, approach it differently. And in terms of the macro picture, the, uh, the story out of the Australian profit season was credit quality, regulation, growing levels of capital, you know, dividend sustainability. In essence, were they the same sort of fundamental? Absolutely. Look, absolutely. At the end of the day, you know, kind of corporate finance 101 is evaluation of a firm as, as some sort of net present value of its future future cash flow or its dividend stream. And so really all the analysts and the investors are trying to figure out, they're trying to predict what that cash flow 
that dividend payout uh, looks like over time and then discounting it back. And so, you know, whether they're asking about top line growth or the provision cycle, they're all just code for trying to figure out the sustainability of our of our earnings. And I think we've got a really good story in that. And, the, you know, to cut to the chase, we accept that the future outlook for revenue growth is more subdued. Not just for, not for ANZ per se, but for the whole, the industry and the place in which we operate. So it's going to be harder. It's going to be harder in terms of system growth and margins and all those things. And that's fine. And at the same time, we've probably got some reasonably stubborn cost growth where we've got a whole bunch of new costs we have to deal with, whether it's compliance and regulatory or technology. And so that just says, gee, if you just really don't change a whole lot, your earnings growth is going to be pretty, pretty meagre. And so that says we do need to change. So we need to be a bit more thoughtful about where we allocate our resources, you know, how we think about productivity and, and be more discerning in that. Thanks very much again for speaking with Blue Notes. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Andrew.